morning! Welcome to day two of the Reading Rush. I am up at 6.30 today and just ready to start my day of reading. I have a fun day ahead of me where I'm going to edit a video and I think that I'm going to make these vlogs daily vlogs, which means that I need to edit all of my video footage from yesterday and get it up sometime this morning. I will say that I woke up and was just ready to read The Nightingale and I'm one of those people where if I don't get up and exercise first thing in the morning it just doesn't happen like I will get going through my day and just forget or choose not to something about working out in the afternoon like it doesn't work for me so I'm up at 6 30 and rather than start reading The Nightingale I'm going to go on my morning walk and then maybe do a yoga video when I get back because I haven't done it in a while and I'm really missing it and feeling like I would benefit from a little bit of yoga. Otherwise today I get to go to the library and pick up some library books. One of those is for a reading challenge for this and then there are three others that are for future reading challenges or just for fun that I have been waiting to pick up. So I think to start my day I am going to head out on my morning walk and listen to With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I'm excited to get into it. Audiobooks, I love them and I really enjoy them, but I haven't rated any audiobook really highly except for The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. And there have been lots of ones that I've really enjoyed, but I just don't catch as much on audiobooks. So my goal for my walk today is to really focus on what I'm hearing and like pay attention to the story and not treat it like background noise because sometimes especially if I'm working out or if I'm doing something else I'll put on an audiobook as background noise or I'll put on a video as background noise and I really want to listen and like get the story so that's my goal go for a walk slash run listen to the audiobook and see where the morning takes me Okay, so it started raining and I had to cut my walk short, so we are going to be doing some yoga. Okay, so I got changed so that I could get out of my sweaty clothes after that yoga. And now I am going to make my coffee and get started with my productive stuff of the day. I will say that making these as daily vlogs is a little challenging for me because I stick to a routine pretty well. Like I do pretty much the same thing every day and that works for me. So I'm having to be creative in how I'm gonna make each of these daily vlogs different and special, or maybe they'll all be exactly the same. Um, I do know that today I'm going to the library, and then later this week I think I'm gonna go to the bookstore. So I'm mixing it up a little bit, but I'm going to be doing my best to make things interesting. For the most part, you guys will just get a good glimpse into my daily routine, because this is all I do every day, it's the same. Okay, I took a shower because after doing that morning yoga and taking my morning walk, I just felt like I needed a refresher. So I did that, I had my morning coffee, I edited and uploaded a video to YouTube, and now I think I'm gonna head out and go to the library because they open at 10 and it's 9.40 right now and it takes like 30 minutes to get there. So. I think I'm gonna head out and listen to the audiobook of With the Fire on High while I'm in the car. So let's get going. She rushes to meet me, and at the sight of her wrinkled forehead, my smile loses its grip and falls off my face. Well, I was wrong, baby girl. I make a move for the couch, but she blocks me with her body. Uh. 
Okay, I am back in the car. I just had a great trip to the library. I picked up four books and I'll show you what they are, but some of them I'm not planning on reading anytime soon. The first one I am reading very soon and that is Bird Box and I'm reading this as part of the reading rush. I also got The Woman in the Window. I got The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager and The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. I also went to a little coffee shop that's right beside the library and picked up an iced coffee. So I am ready to get back home and continue on with my day. Okay, I am back from the library. I just got home and while I was driving to and from the library, I listened to With the Fire on High and I'm absolutely loving it. I love the description of foods and just how beautifully it's written. It feels like poetry. It's just gorgeous and it has a cute romance going on in there. But overall, it's just a story about a hardworking girl who wants to do something with her life and make a better life for her daughter and is figuring out how to do that. And I'm absolutely in love with Amani's character. Amani's the main girl in the book and she is just, she's fiery, she's passionate, she stands up for what she believes in. She's also like trying to watch her mouth because she is trying not to curse in front of her daughter and I absolutely love that because she corrects herself a bunch of times and it's so cute. So I'm loving it. I can't wait to finish it. I finished about another 100 pages and I think it's just getting better and I'm really hooked so I can't wait to finish it. Now I do have some book mail that I'm really excited and this is from Thrift Books and I do know what it is. However, it doesn't feel as heavy as I expected it to. So I'm wondering if I got the version that I wanted or if it's gonna be something different. Um, I mean, I guess we'll see. I wanted a very specific version of this book and I thought that I found it. That doesn't mean that I found it. <laughs> okay, so it is The Binding by Bridget Collins and I got this because it's absolutely gorgeous. And it's a book about books, which I have a very sweet spot in my heart and care a lot about books that are written about other books. And when I saw the cover, I was obsessed. The edges, I'm, I can't stand how beautiful they are. This book is about a man named Emmett who is working for a book binder. And every book that is bound contains a memory and, that somebody wanted to erase. And then he finds a book that has been bound with his name on it, which means that there are memories in it that he wanted to erase at one point. And it's about kind of his exploration of that. But yeah, it's really beautiful. Oh, it is the version I wanted. <laughs> so when you take the dust jacket off, it has these beautiful naked covers that are embossed in gold and it has the edge of the book as well. And the inside cover looks like this. Overall, it's absolutely gorgeous, and I bought it because the book sounds really interesting, but also because it looks absolutely gorgeous, and I needed to own it because this is beautiful. I think that in terms of covers, I'm a sucker for like dark books with gold embossing on it. I will buy it every time. <laughs> for some reason, it is just exactly what I'm looking for. So this was my book mail for the day and I'm so happy it came in. I've been waiting for a couple of weeks. So I'm excited to get into it sometime in the next few months. Now that I'm home, my plans are to read a little bit more of The Nightingale. I have about an hour until lunch. I might try to take my Instagram picture for the day, which is, let's see what the challenge is today. Challenge is to cosplay your book character. I don't want to cosplay a character from The Nightingale, but I might cosplay a character from Bird Box because I think that would be really fun and so much easier than dressing up in a full 1940s Parisian outfit that I don't own. So I might dress up like Mallory from Bird Box. We'll see.
I'm almost done with the nightingale and it's wrecking me. I'm an emotional mess. <laughs> I'm only two chapters away from the end, so I'm gonna power through and finish it, but I just wanted to come on here and say that I am feeling it. <laughs> I feel that last chapter really got to me. <laughs> Gosh darn it, if that book didn't destroy me. <laughs> oh, I'm a freaking mess. Well, I cried a lot. <laughs> Especially the last um, chapter. The last chapter really messed me up a little bit. And um, I will say that it answered my question of who the old woman at the beginning of the story is, who's telling the story in 1995. It was moving. It was beautifully written. It tied together every loose end perfectly. I'm heartbroken and I'm happy and I feel so full of light and love and joy and sadness and heaviness. I mean clearly this book is taking place during World War II in Paris so you can kind of assume what the subject matter is about. It's about what the people of Paris had to go through and what they were surviving during this time and that's not something I read. A, I have read a whole lot about. I've read a lot about um, Germany and the American side of it, but reading about the Paris side of it and just what all kinds of different people had to go through, whether you were Jewish in Paris at the time or whether you were not, whether you were feisty and wanted to fight the war or whether you wanted to maintain the peace and just survive and how hard it was to do any of those things. Just this book is so gorgeous and meaningful. It's hard to describe. I honestly, I didn't cry until probably the last 30 pages and I was kind of getting disappointed because I'm, it's not that hard to make me cry in a book. I'm pretty sensitive. I'll probably cry if it's something that's like really touching or sweet. So I was kind of disappointed because I was like, people told me this book was sad and like, yeah, it was really, there were a lot of moments that were hard to read about and really hurt and I'm like teared up a little bit, but I wanted a good cry and let me tell ya, wait till those last like 20 to 30 pages because they, if you're a crier, they will get you. I am happy that I finished this and that I finally got around to reading it because it was gorgeous and beautiful and I think I'm gonna read something else by Kristen Hanna at some point because I've liked, I liked The Great Alone. I really loved this one. I think it's worth the hype. So on to my next one. And in a complete turnaround of books, I'm immediately starting Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. I watched the movie. This is completing the prompt for a book that inspired a movie that you've already seen. I have seen Bird Box. I really enjoyed it. And so I'm going to be reading this. And I do have questions from when I watched the Bird Box movie because I feel like there were things that just weren't explained very well and I always find that when I watch a movie and something doesn't seem like it was thoroughly explained that the book sometimes does a better job of going into detail explaining why things happened the way they did and what is actually going on so I'm really excited to get into this. It is also kind of going to be a tentatively for the challenge of reading a book in a genre that you don't read a lot of or that you've always wanted to read more of because I really want to get more into horror. I do have Mexican Gothic on standby. If I read books quickly, I'm going to use that as the prompt, but this, if I don't get around Mexican Gothic, this is going to be completing that prompt. All right, I am ready to get a little spooked. I'm ready to be a little freaked out. Okay. <laughs> So I didn't jump immediately into reading because I am currently reading the webcomic series Lore Olympus and it's basically like a graphic novel but online for free and it is telling the story of Persephone and Hades but it's like reimagined. It has all of this Greek mythology in it, all of the gods and goddesses and like nymphs and all these like mythical stories and the illustrations are just beautiful. I feel so connected to these characters and I can't stop and there are 115 episodes in the first season. So the first season just ended but the episodes are like 
it takes maybe like four minutes to read them because you just scroll and they're not very long and I'm absolutely obsessed so if you haven't looked up Lore Olympus please do it's fantastic so far I'm loving it so I didn't jump right into reading Bird Box because I took a break to read that even though it has nothing to do with the reading rush I'm just obsessed with it and I can't wait to finish the first season I'm about halfway through Whew, okay I'm back and I had some work stuff to do and so I talked on the phone I've been doing work calls and work emails for like 30 45 minutes now that was unexpected so I am planning on getting back into reading of course I also got sidetracked watching YouTube videos I'm currently watching <laughs> Books on Lala's, Reading Rush, everybody update uploaded their day one of the readathon vlogs, and so I've been watching those. Yeah, I'm just ready to get back into reading. I read the first chapter of Bird Box, and so far it's pretty following along pretty closely to the movie, so I guess we'll see how it continues. Okay, it's currently 3.45 and I need to start cooking at 5.45. So I'm going to be doing a one hour sprint where I read from 3.45 to 4.45. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and then maybe keep reading a little bit more after that. Or I might go out on a walk, I haven't decided yet. But what I do know is for the next hour exactly, I'm going to be reading Bird Box. So I read for an hour, actually I read for a little bit more because Brent is staying late for work today and so I had a little bit of extra time and I read until 5 and that got me halfway through the book. So I just read 130 pages, I'm switching my laundry over right now, don't mind me, but I read 130 pages of Bird Box and it is intense. It is a fast paced and intense thriller so far it has very short chapters and it's not exactly like the movie there are definitely some changes so I'm really enjoying it I have been a little creeped out and I watched Bird Box for the first time right before we went into lockdown so it was very timely for me and freaked me out a lot and I just really am relating with the book so much more because now we've lived through this lockdown and this quarantine and I can understand what it's like when she talks about feeling anxious about being stuck inside and not being able to go outside and not knowing what is causing the problem, what will help and just their panic and their fear. I just feel so much more connected to it now that we've lived through this pandemic and are still going through this pandemic. So it's intense and I'm enjoying it. I actually listened to the movie soundtrack on YouTube. So there was just a video that had the entire soundtrack and it was really spooky. It freaked me out and it definitely made the reading experience much scarier than it would have been if I just read it in silence. So I highly recommend if you're gonna read the book, look up the movie soundtrack on YouTube because especially the first 15 minutes made me sick almost. It was very stressful. Alright friends, I am 166 pages into Bird Box, which is over halfway, and it's very fast paced. I feel like I could maybe keep reading it tonight, and I still might, but I'm pretty tired and I kind of just want to go upstairs and cuddle into bed. I think I'll take this with me and see if I get any more reading done, but this will probably be my last update for the day. So thank you for tagging along on day two of the reading rush. Hopefully by tomorrow I can finish this and start my next book. All right, see you guys tomorrow.